Hello everyone, before we start today's video, if you could all do me a solid and lightly tap the like button, perhaps share the video about and leave a comment. If you are not subscribed, subscribe as well. It would greatly help this channel. Thank you very much. Captain's Log. Subdates 220911.7. Having absorbed vast sums of glory hammer and brothers of metal, I'm considering a mandate of hammers and axes to be carried at all times, consumption of mead with every meal, and a minimum height requirement of all NPC crew of six foot three. We shall be weeding out the weak. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'd like to talk about a few different incidents concerning deaf noodles, a little response video, some other videos we need to look at, and the unrelenting back and forth concerning Salvo Pancakes and the master of comedy himself. But to start, did Deaf Noodles just say that he's gonna make people lock up their phones with them before they enter his club? Deaf who? The reason why is because Deaf Noodles wants people to um, enjoy the show more. Akin to that of a gig where some bands, bigger bands especially, want you to enjoy the atmosphere, the spectacle as it were, and not because if no one else is recording it, even though many have for the first two shit shows he's put forward as ha, comedy roasts, he has exclusive content for it, which means he in turn can mute all that he wants so no one can hear some of the context. He can then decide what the viewers get to have. He can then essentially monopolize what we see and hear from his roast battles which is understandable to an extent, a very small extent, not even slightly. Many of us are skeptical of his good intentions, and therefore, because we know from the last roast battle, where he actually had some of the audio muted before, during Salvo was on the stage, he was invited to be there, so that was weird. We didn't get that context to know what Salvo had said that would even cause the outrage that led to Deffy even yeeting him off the stage himself, and then hiding behind his security because he's big time and big brave. Thankfully though, members of the audience had the uh, tenacity to record everything we needed and release it to the internet. About that, Deaf Noodles, they can say whatever they want. Also, Deaf Noodles, I'm gonna sue you for talking. This concerns an individual called Tiana. Underneath is an image from an Instagram story. This is a note that you are in breach of your NDA. My lawyer has been activated, five power rings and all that, you know. By continuing to misrepresent your time working for me and slandering me, you are making it inevitable for this to be settled in court. Caption, my old boss is suing me because I made a story time and said I'm lying on his lie. Find God for real. The fun thing about this really is, at no point in Tiana's content, did she actually mention Deaf Noodles? Not by name, no explicit detail that would actually say it was Deaf Noodles she was referring to. We all knew it was Deaf Noodles, but there was no explicit name. Therefore, you would find it hard to believe that it was Deaf Noodles at all. It could have been from McDonald's, you never know. Now there is a bit of context, it's on the screen in fact, concerning a back and forth message exchange between Tiana and somebody else. During it, Tiana goes through in detail, her own experiences of working with somebody that could well be Deaf Noodles. Going out, not being prepared, held Deaf Noodles himself or whoever it was in question, wasn't really interested in being where they were going or enjoying it, they just wanted the content. And ending with, yeah, I'm done with this shit, I'm out. It's two minutes long and I'll link the tweet down below if you are interested in it. Tiana, after being sued, put out a tweet. Imagine being an old man, suing a 22-year-old girl for making a TikTok storytime video where your name was never even mentioned, Lamau, and then said, old man calls me a clout chaser when I've never mentioned his name, please check your ego, I've made one single video about my experience and not done a single interview even though I've had an insane amount of people reach out to me. I don't care for drama and want no part in any of it but to sue me when I wasn't even coming at you and then straight up lie on live and then not let me show my receipts? Something I on like that. I don't know what that means. Is that confusion? Also lying about buy me water, another acronym I don't know. What I'm getting from this is, Deaf Noodles is cheap, which is oddly, in the message exchanges, something I recognized. 
because Death Noodles wasn't best impressed about having to pay potential damages, or somebody wasn't, for a car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to bother beating around the bush on this one anymore. But somebody that's made himself is a builder, an imaginary, a philosopher, a comedian. Built himself from the ground up. I'm assuming we now need to recite the uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, but change it for West Brazil, born and raised in the favela you spent most of your days. Yes, is that it? And then somehow end with you being sent to New York to live your best life with money. You really have then Death Noodles embraced your American identity by suing everyone. How'd that defamation lawsuit go with Keemstar? Because we never heard much about it. Now this one, you really are in the market for another lawsuit. It's quite quaint, cute, adorable. Now to move on from that, we're going to go to a tweet from Hannah with a video. And that video is something I want to look at. With the tweet caption being, The spoiled brat vibes are unreal. A 51 second clip. I'm sure this is going to be absolutely scrum diddly umptious. Somebody said the best comedians handle hecklers way better. Go, so go suck the dick. I'm going to insert a minor spoiler because you're about to say something that would seem strange. Humble brag as it were. But what you have done, and yet people do have a legitimate complaint because... From the roast battle content we have seen so far, there is nothing to indicate you possess a funny bone. You don't handle heckles well. You really don't. Your defense mechanism is, you can leave then. I are arbiter of comedy after all. If you can't find my funny funny, then you are gobbling on someone else's schlong? Uh, Dennis, this isn't a playground. It's my playground. It's whatever the f I want. I built all of this from here then would you not consider this a minor problem? A firmware issue, perhaps, that requires an update. Maybe an error 404, blue screen of death, because your current trajectory is not indicative of somebody who is building anything. It is indicative of someone who is seeking to destroy themselves and use it to turn tricks for profit. Maybe that's why your hair's so big, you're hiding most of your ears. Maybe you are Ferengi. I imagined it, and then I built it. I know it seems foreign to a lot of people out there, especially the people who are clipping me. Like, you don't have the power of manifestation of, like, creatively imagining something and bringing it into fruition. Well, that's a tad patronizing, don't you think? Looking down upon your detractors as if you are superior. But then again, this is a level of arrogance we know you have possessed for a long time. Remember, when you were corrected when you first started making mistakes, your way of dealing with it was to block everyone and then claim that you were being victimized. Which you're still doing because you believe those same detractors are trying to get you to platform. Which is why you promote Patreon the way you do. I will give you credit though. The idea of doing what you're doing is a great idea. The implementation is the issue. Because you seem to have cut corners and you don't seem to be prepared for any of it. You almost seem to lack a wit when it comes to roasting another person as well. This is something I was talking to Steven like six, seven months before I even did it. I told him I was trying to get a comedy club and all this shit. So that's what I did. It is my playground. It's whatever the fuck I want it to be. If I decide to tear everything down and build something different, I'll do it. It's my sandbox, my playground, my building, my place, my rules. Well, that would certainly go so far as to explain why your roast battles have been so rip-roaringly successful, for all the wrong reasons. Have you considered instead eating the sand from the sandbox? You might find the audience more engaging in it, especially if it's that magic sand that you do in water and do shapes with. Yeah. When Hannah said that that was brat vibes, I kind of got the feeling too that it felt very bratty, akin to someone saying mine, 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 mine. You do what I say when I say it, we do it now, we do it my way or no way, you get out. But at the same time, it is your comedy club? Sure, just keep broadcasting them so we can enjoy the, um, magic. Now we're not done here, there is some Salvo-related stuff going on, concerning Corey, a comic for Deaf Noodles, who was assaulted outside of the comedy club. Corey, Corey, chill, Corey, chill, Corey, chill. Corey, relax, chill, 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 bro. Corey, chill. Corey, chill, 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 chill. With that being retweeted by Salvo saying further evidence that Death Noodles has violent comics, the victim of Corey the Voice Assault was not even looking in that direction before Corey assaulted him. I hope he's okay. <laughs> I was on. Hey. 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 
Death Noodles retweeted Salvo by saying, here's the uncut and unedited footage of what actually happened that night. This person who went to my club with sole purpose of disrupting got kicked out, then caused a scene, then harassed people outside. I have more footage of this harassment. You call that unedited? How bad is your audio? Or how bad were your jokes that your audio was that bad? We can't get much in the way of context from a two minute video because of how horrendous the audio is. I guess the saving grace is that Parking Tigers Underneath tweeted, we see the assault start at 59 seconds, thanks for the new angle, which you now see on the screen as I'm talking because I don't want you to hear how horrendous that audio is. Underneath Def Noodles' tweet, Repzilla. During what little of the Twitter space I attended, I observed you saying Corey pushed no one and calling the speaker, trying to inform you that Corey did in fact push his little brother, a troll. Underneath that, Anastasia. Quote, Corey didn't push anybody, okay? Corey wouldn't push anybody. End quote. What a liar. I guess we should end with that then, I guess. It's fucked to come here and then act like a troll. Like, my brother, I have security camera footage. I saved all of it. Corey didn't push anybody. Okay? Koi wouldn't push anybody. The time has come. Okay. Fam, if you look at the footage, Corey is quite easy to mark out. If you don't believe he shoved someone or got aggressive with someone, but you're willing to claim harassment that no one can confirm nor deny because the audio is so bad, but unedited as well, by the way, you are delusional. Additionally, for those who wanted to know the context of that Twitter space, Death Noodles wanted to speak to his 10 biggest haters, 10 biggest fans, blah, 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 blah. Ta-ta, everyone.